The most well-known global grid is probably the graticules, segmenting the Earth's surface by degrees of longitude and latitude. When looking at the globe, we see that towards the poles, the individual segments become smaller and smaller. These segments, or cells, by themselves are also not indexed as such, but their position could be described to the bounding coordinates. Projected onto the plane, this becomes what we currently work with, rectangular grids. Pixels in a grid, aka rasters. Raster data is well indexed by the X and Y location of the pixel within the grid, with an origin and a geotransform for the grid. But on a global scale, those pixels, aka cells, represent vastly different areas on the surface of the Earth. So what makes a discrete global grid system special? The Open Geospatial Consortium's DGGS Working Group has formalized a standard, the OGC ISO DGGS Abstract Specification in 2017, that defines a discrete global grid system as a spatial reference system that uses a hierarchical tessellation of cells to partition and address the globe. Discrete global grid systems, DGGSs, are considering the Earth always in 3D and are designed to discretize the surface of the Earth into a set of hierarchical, congruent, regular cells. In addition, these cells are georeferenced and addressable with a unique identifier that can be easily computed from location and resolution and vice versa. The cell ID represents its location, centroid and surface area. Well-known cell shapes to build such DGGSs are hexagons, squares, and triangles. Theoretical designs are described in the scientific literature. Originally, DGGS stem from location indexing, predominantly for binning and statistical aggregation, and a small number of implementations with limited applicability are available. You might have heard of the Uber H3 hexagonal hierarchical spatial indexing system. It is a good DDGS for Uber's city-level use case. Support is already widely available due to its easy usability and stable cross-platform software. However, you need to be aware that H3 is not suitable to index and represent spatially continuous data on larger scale, because the cells are in fact not equal area and their size can vary by a factor of plus minus 50%. There is an increasing potential to test and align DGGS and data cube use cases. Through reliable cell indexing, a DGGS data cube setup can easily align all variables. Data storage is not limited to arrays and rasters, but one can make use of efficient OLAP and key value data storage system or cloud optimized distributed tabular data formats. We are working also with the Pangeo community to test DGGS integration with unstructured grids, which are heavily used in large-scale global meteorological and ocean models, such as ICON and MPAS. In Europe, we are developing a consortium with partners to concentrate and further develop DGGS knowledge, from research organizations and universities to EO startups and national statistical offices, with a wide range of use cases and a strong platform for education and training. 